today i'm going to discuss about pack cell volume hi everyone i am manoranjan barman pack cell volume is also known as hematocrit pcv is the volume of pack red cells out of the whole blood pcv is expressed as percentage of total blood volume it is a simple test to identify conditions like anemia or polycythemia If you take a glass tube and fill it with 1 ml of EDTA anticoagulated blood and centrifuge after centrifugation the components of blood separates into three distinct parts as the red blood cells are having more density they settle at the bottom of the tube the red cells will be packed and occupy approximately 0.45 ml of the total blood volume if we express it as percentage then 0.45 divided by 1 into 100 is equal to 45%. That means your RBC occupy approximately 45% of the total blood. This is known as pack cell volume. The pack cell volume depends on the size and number of the red blood cells. If the size or number of RBC decreases, then the area occupied by RBC will be comparatively less and that results low PCV than normal. In iron deficiency anemia most of the RBC become microcyte means smaller size RBC than the normal microcytic cells will give a low PCV than the normal on the other hand if we talk about polycythemia in which number of RBC increases than the normal as the number of RBC increases it will occupy more area resulting high PCV in case of megaloblastic anemia macrocytes are seen in the blood circulation which are larger than the normal cells those macrocytes will occupy more area as a result high pcv is seen in megaloblastic anemia now let's talk about the layer that is on top of the red blood cells which is also known as buffy coat that consists of wbc and platelets buffy coat occupies less than 1% of the whole blood the layer on top of the buffy coat is known as plasma which is the liquid part of the blood Plasma consists of water and dissolved solutes. Around 90 to 93% water is there in the plasma and various solutes are dissolved in the plasma. Among the dissolved solutes, plasma proteins basically albumin, globulin, fibrinogens are there. Electrolytes like sodium, potassium, chlorine, etc. Nutrients like glucose, amino acid, fatty acids are present in the plasma. enzymes hormones metabolic waste like urea creatinine uric acids are also present dissolved gases like oxygen carbon dioxide nitric oxides are also present in the plasma now i'm going to talk about the methods pcv can be done by two methods macrohematocrit method where we use wintrop hematocrit tube and microhematocrit method where we use heparinized capillary tube or plain capillary tube with edta blood when there is difficulty in drawing sufficient amount of blood microhematocrit method is used particularly in pediatric patients first i'll talk about pcb by macrohematocrit method let's talk about the clinical significance increased hematocrit is seen in polycythemia dehydration emphysema smokers and copd patients also have high pcv Due to chronic hypoxia, increased PCV increases the viscosity of blood, so increases peripheral resistance. Hence, higher PCV may have higher blood pressure. Decreased hematocrit is seen in anemia and hydremia, but there is an exception: megaloblastic anemia, because of present of macrocytes in the circulation, it can results in increased PCV values. Next principle. When anticoagulated blood is centrifuged in a Wintrop hematocrit tube at a high speed, the red cells will sediment at the bottom of the tube because the red cells are heavier than the WBC platelets and plasma. The red cell column is called PCV or hematocrit. Now let's talk about requirements. First we need specimen. EDTA anticoagulated blood is required. Wintrop tube is needed, Pasteur pipette and a centrifuge machine. Let's talk about the Wintrop tube. It is a thick walled glass tube having 11 cm long. The internal diameter of the Wintrop tube is 3 mm. The Wintrop tube has a flat inner base. 
The Wintrop tube can hold 1 milliliter of blood. Wintrop tube is calibrated tube from both end. One side is used for measuring the hematocrit and the other side is used for measuring the ESR. Now let's talk about the procedure. Mix the blood sample carefully. Level a Wintrop tube. Fill the tube using a pastry pipette up to the 10 mark. Avoid air bubbles. Most of the time, it may be quite challenging while filling the Wintrop tube with blood. You can check the video. It may be playing on the screen. Place the tube in a centrifuge and balance it with another Wintrop tube which is filled with blood. Centrifuge for 30 minutes at 3000 RPM. After centrifugation, measure the height of the RBC column. That is PCV. Express it as percentage of whole blood. Remember, the buffy coat on top of the RBC column is not included in the PCV. The color of the plasma can also reflect some clinical conditions. Like, yellow color of plasma indicates jaundice, Milky plasma indicates lipemia. Lipemia means more lipids are present in blood. Cloudy plasma indicates multiple myeloma. Redis indicates hemolysis. Hemolysis means broken down RBC. Now I'm going to talk about microhematocrit method. Requirement. We need specimen. EDTA blood specimen can be used if you're using plain capillary tube. You can use capillary blood also if you are using heparinized capillary tube for this test. You need hematocrit centrifuge, which is a specialized centrifuge for microhematocrit. You need hematocrit reader, capillary tube. You can use plain capillary tube while using EDTA venous blood or you can use heparinized capillary tube if you are using capillary blood. Soft wax or clay for sealing the side of the capillary tube. The procedure. Draw the specimen into appropriate capillary tube. Fill two-third length of the tube with blood. Seal both the end of the tube with soft wax or clay. It is plugged to a depth of about 1 cm. Place the tube with another similar tube in the radial groove of the centrifuge head exactly opposite to the each other. Close the centrifuge cover and centrifuge the tubes at high speed of 15,000 rpm for 5 minutes. After centrifugation, remove the capillary tube. Now let's talk about the observation. After centrifugation, the tube will show three layers. First one is clear plasma at top. Then white is buffy coat at the middle. And the column of red blood cells at the bottom of the tube. You can read PCV as follows. Hold the tube against the hematocrit scale so that the bottom of the tube of RBC cells is aligned with horizontal zero line. Move the tube across the scale until the line marked 100 passes through the top of the plasma column. The line that passes through the top of the RBC column gives the PCV value. You can refer to the image which is placed on the screen. Microhematocrit method has some advantages and disadvantages as well. First I'll talk about advantages. Very small amount of blood is required. Blood sample can be easily obtained from finger prick. Time required for centrifugation is very less. Disadvantage, it requires a special centrifuge and reader. Now coming to the end part, that is interfering factors of PCV. There are several physiological conditions where hematocrit may deviate from its normal range. Newborn baby shows high hematocrit values. It gradually decreases. Adult male has higher hematocrit values than adult female. Pregnant women shows lower hematocrit due to hemodilution. Persons living in high altitude can have higher hematocrit as the number of red blood cells becomes high due to the persistence hypoxia. Please like, share and comment. And those who are new to my channel, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you.